at Action. So we have uh, Abner from Juniper Networks and Stu Miniman from the Wikibon Project. Senior analyst, uh, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks. So, so Abner, we were just talking about uh, the Apple news and obviously Apple's the epitome of the user experience out there at mobile and mobile is, you know, everyone expects mobile. User experience has changed and the demand is unprecedented in terms of this disruption. They want everything at the edge, they want it fast, uh, they want it secure. Um, your company, Juniper Networks, competes with Cisco Systems and so, you know, you guys are the guys running the networks, okay? You have the plumbing, running the bits and the packets, work with the carriers, running the, uh, the data across the network. What's changing? You guys have a philosophy that's quite different than Cisco. Um, Cisco's the you know, fully integrated stack, um, pushing some video as well, so they're, they're pushing an innovation message, but you guys have a new architecture. So compare what you guys are doing with Cisco and Stu, let's riff on the whole, what is the preferred network architecture for the user experiences? Sure. All right, two big questions, actually fairly closely related. So, classically networking was a black box that I bought into, and a particular vendor would develop the silicon, the, all the software for it, uh, and I, I bought a box. And so, today you hear network people talk about, oh, I've got a Juniper over there, I've got a Cisco over there, and, and they refer to their boxes as uh, the way that they build networks. What's happened is that in the networking world, Juniper in particular has looked at, well, what's the architecture that the rest of the IT industry has adopted? And that's an, an architecture that's a layer cake model where the applications are separate from the operating system, which is separate from the silicon, and that allows you to innovate very quickly and do some interesting things like start to solve management problems because no longer do you want to manage just one box, you want to manage all the boxes in concert with each other and you don't want to think of them as boxes anymore, you want to think of them as, as a network. Which brings us to virtualization. So one of the things that's happened with virtualization is the you have a set of virtual connections that applications connect to, and then you have an underlying infrastructure that's physical. Right. And if your underlying infrastructure is spaghetti, you can't connect those things together. It's, it's, you're just sort of layering some, some sauce on that, and it, it might work for a little while, but it doesn't necessarily get you the, uh, the ability to move things around very, in a very fluid fashion. And so one of the things that we look at is, well, one, how do you innovate on the network in a way that's identical to the classic IT innovation model, which is open it up, give you uh, an open interface for people to develop new applications, uh, have a common interface across multiple components of the network. So Juniper runs Junos, which is our operating system across switching, routing, and security, and that allows us to do some really cool thi things with partners and um, and help drive down the cost of building the reliable network that companies have always wanted, but has been very difficult to achieve with uh, legacy architectures. Stu, you're an expert in this area, obviously you're an, and you're an analyst, you're covering this new architecture models that are emerging from the vendors and the companies innovating out there. What's your angle on, and you worked at EMC, so you know the storage business up and down, but you also know networking. What's your angle on, on what's happening from your research and what you're seeing out in the marketplace. Uh, Talk about you know, what, what that is. Uh, okay, John, so uh, you know, w w before it used to be network was just kind of the pipes that got me things and the, the separation, there wasn't a real strong connection between my application and what I needed to do. It was just the network guy was over there, go provision me some bandwidth, uh, maybe, uh, you know, uh, if you got to go play with quality of service, that was usually a dirty word uh, to the networking guys. And, and today, you know, it's not set it up once and forget about it and you know, it grows and expands and moves incrementally, but now we have a completely different scenario where what you put today is going to move all the time. It's changing all, all over the place and the, the, the biggest challenge here is really from a management perspective. Security is also a real big issue, but uh, what I've seen Juniper doing is the integration that they've done with VMware and I think they're talking about that here at the conference is uh, have some, some great solutions pulling together you know, the virtual infrastructure and management. Right. So, so the question I have for Abner, maybe Stu as well, is that we heard about server consolidation around with Fusion IO and all this stuff where they're consolidating but yet increasing performance. So the question is, is it the same on the network side where 
there's some consolidation or reconfiguration and higher performance? Is that the same kind of direction? Do you see that going that way, or what's, you know, Abner, what's going yeah, on so at, the, at, the, at the lower levels there? Yeah, you, you don't have consolidation from in the same way that we consolidated servers, or for the same reason we had server, we consolidated servers. We consolidated servers because there was um, an, an efficiency problem. We were, it just wasn't getting utilized. The consolidation that's occurring on the network is we have a, a new design problem. So in, when we move from client-server architectures, the design problem was how do I get the traffic from the server out into the rest of the world? Now it's how do I pull it into the data center, bounce it around a whole bunch of times, and then spit it back out. So, so, so Abner, actually, if, I, if you don't mind me yeah. jumping in here. So actually, I think there, first of all, there is an efficiency issue right. with networking today. Uh, Juniper and a lot of your competitors out there are solving that because rather than having you know, uh, you know, blocking architectures, right. over-provisioning, we're, we're now building you know, much bigger scale-out architectures that are going to be able to support cloud-type uh, applications, and we're using every port, and we're going to much you know, higher speed. We've got 10 gig now, 40 gig and 100 gig just been approved and are coming soon. So the price per port is, is such that it needs to be used right. and, and we can't just waste resources the way, waste maybe is the wrong word, but we have to more efficiently use uh, right. everything the, that we have. So. The, the efficiency problem is one of basically asking a very simple question. How do you get traffic from one side of a data center to the other? And whether that traffic is application traffic, because our application architectures have changed, whether it's a VM that's moving across the data center because our compute architectures have changed, or whether it's moving storage across the data center because our storage architectures are changing, um, that requires a, a fundamentally different architecture that make that you where you need to be as efficient as possible in a, a number of different places. It's not just moving the packets; it's management and um, and just what's how do you operate the network and automate all of those different moving parts. Right, and, and, and I think, you know, really networking bears the brunt of a lot of the changes that are going on in virtualization. Before, um, you would have a steady growth and, and a really predictable pattern of traffic, and now we're moving things all over, um, you know, spikes, and there, there aren't, there's not the downtime to reconfigure, so. Well, I'd like to chip into the virtualization, yeah. but let, let's hold that for a second, because okay. I think Abner brings up a good point. Change is happening, the fact, the, 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 the constant thing that we're seeing is change. Randy Bias on earlier, an entrepreneur uh, who's building clouds from scratch. You know, it's this disruptive change we haven't seen in right. 30 years, and uh, it's going to continue to disrupt for 20 more years, as his, his quote, which is great. Uh, the question is, is that we have a philosophy difference. I mean, Juniper in particular, you talk about Juno, so it's a kind of an open. So here in the VMware world, you got open models where there's innovation extraction from ecosystems. Todd Nielsen saying for every dollar is $15 of ecosystem money, which basically means people get make money and go public and things happen. Um, and you got guys like Oracle, right? So we heard that at SAP. Oracle, SAP. Open, VMware, closed. People want to know, really, Juniper and Cisco. It seems to be the same argument, like Cisco, Oracle, Juniper. Talk about you guys, how you differentiate, how you position so, via Cisco. So, so can I just, to add to that point, I guess, so uh, VMware laid out a new vision today uh, for where they're going with networking. So VMware, they're calling it their V chassis vision. So this is taking uh, the virtual switch, uh, they had the virtual distributed switch, and now they really have a virtual director. So Abner and I were talking earlier because um, I've talked to a lot of the networking players out there, and there's that, uh, there, there's, let's say, some friction between VMware's vision and where some of the infrastructure uh, players are going, so I'm curious to get you know, your, your, your take on this. Yeah, well, we don't have a, a big legacy infrastructure in the data center to protect, so the, more dis the faster disruption occurs, right. um, that's okay with us. And the, the piece that's, that, that all of this comes down to is what are the components that an IT manager can move around. So today, a VM is sort of the, as somebody said, the atomic unit of cloud computing. Yeah. And if I've standardized my VMs, I can move them within my own infrastructure and out into other infrastructures. I think there's an open question in terms of how does that, do those atomic units and what are the different slices that, uh, that managers can move around to optimize their own infrastructures, burst into clouds for, um, for that, uh, capability and the, the economics around that, and you know we look at how do you interface with those sorts of systems like the VMware V chassis, and that's where you need a, a web services interface that crosses all of the components of the network, um, and we do that with a, a platform called Juno Space. 
Right, I mean, let's talk about the virtualization. We got two minutes left, so um, well, if you want to address the Oracle kind of open, close issue, that you can do that real quick. I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, and Cisco, the open, and the open close, look, everybody's trying to open all sorts of interfaces. And so the issue isn't how many interfaces do you have open and are your interfaces more open than, than the other guys. The issue is can developers develop on your platform in a way that at some point you don't pull the sand out from yeah, underneath yeah. them, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's, they, they can't develop on sand, they've got to develop on concrete. Stu, so on the virtualization piece, what are you seeing in terms of virtualization? Because virtual machines can be used for configurations, help balance networks. Doug Gourlay from Arista Networks earlier mentioned, you know, load balancing is going to be a kind of a big area. We heard Fusion IO with the storage side. Is what's going on in the networking? What does virtualization enable? Right. So, so and Abner, I, if you have you a know, comment, that'd be great. Right. I yeah. mean, virtualization. If you look, the you know, we had a bunch of years that virtualization was a pure economics play where it was doing consolidation. Now we have uh, many operational. Uh, pieces of virtualization that are making changes, um, but you know, on, on the economic conditions, uh, you know, hopefully we're doing a little bit better uh, globally, and and therefore that it's giving us some opportunities for hopefully take advantage of some more innovations uh, out there in the marketplace. Yeah, I would say you know, virtualization when you're when you start moving VMs around, it loads the network, which is great. Uh, it creates a, a series of security problems, and and we have some some nice solutions with uh, a couple of partners. Uh, we also think that you know you need to get the network out of the way to a certain degree because the network's not the, the important part as, as you know pays my paycheck but um, the network is secondary to the application and when you look at how do you spin applications up very very quickly uh, the infrastructure can't be in the way of that and that's that's where people are trying to make sure that it's not um, you know one, one way that people are getting in, in the way of each other today with virtualization is what does the network guy manage on the physical network and what does the server guy manage on the virtual network? And is it a interface problem or is it an orchestration yeah. problem? We believe it's an orchestration problem. Yeah, well we have one minute left or just under one minute, so real quick, just, just predictions, I mean, in the, in the networking business. What's going to change? What's going to be the disruptive enabler? Just real quick, kind of summarize that real fast. Um, it's what is the software architecture and how does that software architecture drive costs down for customers in both CapEx and OpEx? Stu, what's your vision the next couple of years with networking? Right, so, so uh, you know, it's, 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 it's a great time to be in the networking space because while we've had a long time that nothing has changed, pretty much everything's changing now. So, you know, a switch isn't going to look like a switch anymore. The physical and, and virtual uh, barriers are all coming down. And, uh, you, you know, you talk about the Apple and everything, you know, consumerization of IT, uh, you know, that, that's going to hit the network side too. Okay, we're here at SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of VMworld Live 2010. We're hearing about the networking side, how all this disruption is going to be changing, even how networks are built and scaled and managed and uh, to support these consumer apps, whether they're IT or mobile consumer. So, that's uh, great. Thanks guys very much. We'll be right back. We'll take a short break. and. Uh,